This is a demonstration video showing how to electroplate copper onto various objects. Before we show some examples of copper electroplating, here's a little bit of background to the theory. Using a solution of copper sulfate, this allows movement of copper ions. To drive the movement of these copper ions, we add some electrodes in the solution. One electrode tends to be pure copper, as this replenishes the copper ions in solution, and this copper electrode is consumed in the process and the other electrode is the material that you wish to electroplate on. It is worth noting that some materials are easier to electroplate on than others. And indeed, electroplating on some materials requires specialist chemicals to allow the electroplating to occur on the surface. However, the materials that we show later on in the video are relatively easy to electroplate on. With our electrodes submerged in the solution of copper sulphate, we now connect them to our DC power supply. The positive terminal, or anode, goes to our copper electrode, and the negative terminal, or cathode, goes to the material we wish to electroplate. On applying a current for the solution, we have transfer of copper from our anode to our cathode. The shape and separation distance between our electrodes can influence the uniformity of the electroplating on our cathode. And now time for some demonstrations. We're going to use a clean polypropylene container to do our electroplating in. To this we add demineralized water. Then we add some copper sulfate, which we happen to make in a previous video to make our electrolyte. We stir our solution with a stainless steel spoon or spatula to help dissolve any remaining copper sulfate. To electroplate copper, you should use a consumable copper anode. For this demonstration, we're going to use a copper water pipe that was split open. We're going to connect this to our positive terminal. For our first demonstration of copper plating, we're going to copper plate onto a clean metal coin. This coin initially has got a nickel coating on the surface. So we connect this coin to our negative terminal and our DC power supply. And place it in our solution next to our copper anode. So we've been electroplating onto our coin now for about 20 minutes. Every minute or two we've been rotating our coin round to expose a different area directly to our copper anode. After cleaning the coin with metal polish, it's quite clear to see the coin has successfully been plated with copper. What about electroplating onto a non-conductive item, such as a golf ball? Golf ball is manufactured from plastic, and plastics are not very good at conducting electricity. So let's see how we can electroplate on this. So first off, we need to make an electrical contact. To do this, we're going to be a little bit destructive and drill into our golf ball. Now we're going to screw in a screw to make handling and our electrical contact a little bit easier. Just like electroplating onto the coin, it's very important to keep things clean, so we give this a clean with IPA. Now we need to make our golf ball conductive. To do this, we're going to paint on some graphite paint. We want to achieve a uniform coating across the surface area on the golf ball. After fully coating the golf ball, we allow it to dry. This takes about an hour. Now using a multimeter we can measure resistance so we can see how good the surface coating is. So if a multimeter from one end to the other we get about 1.7 kilorohms. We electroplate onto our golf ball using the same technique as we electroplated onto our coin. So we use a solution of copper sulphate. To this we add our consumable copper anode in. Using the electrical terminal that we've made on our golf ball, we now connect this to the negative side of our power supply, or the cathode. Due to the relatively high electrical resistance across the surface of our golf ball, the initial copper plating onto the surface might take some time. As soon as copper starts to be plated on the golf ball, this will decrease the electrical resistance on the surface 
and help increase the current flow from our copper anode to our golf ball which is acting as our cathode. I would recommend against trying to use higher voltages to speed up the process, as higher voltages might damage the conductive graphite coating on the surface of the golf ball and also potentially generate hydrogen and oxygen gas in our electrodes. After removing the screw and cleaning the golf ball, you can see that we've successfully managed to plate the ball with copper. For our final copper electroplating demonstration, we're going to electroplate onto some polystyrene sheeting, which is flexible. We happen to have removed this from some plastic packaging. So just like our golf ball, we need to make this conductive. And again, we're going to use some conductive graphite paint. So for this demonstration, we're going to paint the word copper on the surface. This part is sped up by the weight. Now we paint a conductive strip such that we can connect all the letters together. This will allow electroplating over everything using a single electrical connection. We leave that to dry for an hour. And using a multimeter, we can check the electrical resistance. So if our probes on either end, we've got around 7 kilo ohms. If we transfer our probes to our polystyrene sheet, we can't measure any conductivity at all, so it's a very good electrical insulator. So using the same procedure as before, we add a consumable copper anode to our bath of copper sulphate. Then we connect the negative side of our power supply to the conductive strip we've painted on. Initially we're going to electroplate down one side of it. This will decrease the electrical resistance and make plating the rest of the sign a lot easier. After six to seven hours we've removed our workpiece from our electrolyte, washed and dried it and you can clearly see that we've copper plated the word copper. On turning our polystyrene sheet around the conductive carbon paint is clearly visible. Now for demonstration purposes we're going to paint a strip using our conductive graphite paint down one side and compare the electrical conductivity. Using a multimeter we can compare the electrical resistance. To start with we're going to measure the electrical resistance against the copper strip that we've electroplated end to end what we can see is less than an ohm. If we compare the conductive graphite paint strip, after changing the scale of the multimeter to make it more sensitive, the end-to-end -end resistance is around 5 kilo ohms. That's more than 5,000 times the resistance that we measured across our copper. The closer we move our probes and our conductive graphite paint, the lower the resistance. Perhaps a good way to visualize the difference in electrical conductivity between copper and our conductive graphite paint is to use an LED in a circuit. It's easy to see the LED light up using the copper that we've electroplated whereas the conductive graphite paint hardly lights the LED at all due to its high electrical resistance. And the big question some of us have been wondering did the copper plated golf ball make any difference? And as with most golf novelties the answer is no. Thanks for watching.